So my name is Michal Gabrielczyk and I'm head of Edge AI at Cambridge Consultants. We're a product developer and a technology consultancy. So in practice, that means we help our clients make big technology-led innovations in their markets. That could mean taking them through an ASIC development. It could mean designing a wearable and taking it all the way to manufacture. Um, maybe it's advising on technology choices for someone considering a smart factory. So all, all that breadth of technology, uh, technology expertise. And the common thread in all of that is that we're really interested in understanding the edges of what's possible with technology and what the trade-offs might be in, in real applications. So for us, the IoT is a really interesting area uh, and we're really interested in understanding the capabilities of endpoint devices. So we've been looking at the Cortex M55 and the Ethos U55 to understand how they build on the capabilities of the M-series processors that we've been working with for a number of years. For us, it's really important that we understand the full picture of what technology is available on the market for our customers so we can choose the absolutely optimal design choice for them. Um, I mean, increasingly, we're seeing uh, demand for more intelligence uh, embedded into end devices. So understanding the landscape of IP and how that relates to the different algorithms and the power and performance trade-offs is really key for our customers. We've been an ARM approved design partner for a number of years now. And we're in the great position from that to get early access to ARM's IP so we can understand what's possible. And in return, we're able to provide feedback to ARM on the performance in our applications and also the tools before they go on to general release. We've got access to pretty much everything we need to develop a real application. So we've got access to the Cortex M55 earlier in the year. And as part of that, we got access to the RTL, to the fast models and the cycle models, to an FPGA platform. And most importantly of all, we've actually been able to work closely with the team at ARM to, who've actually developed all of that. So we started with a voice activity detection application and we wanted to draw a comparison with earlier platforms that we are familiar with. So we started with something that would enable us to do that and to explore the capabilities of the, of the new uh, Cortex M55. That voice activity de detection application was originally implemented on an ARM Cortex A9 and then we ported it onto silicon targeting uh, Cortex M3 along with our own Sapphire DSP. And the aim of that was to achieve really low power draw for that voice activity detection uh, application. The DSP was listening for sound, and then it was turning on the Cortex M3 to classify the words only when it was needed. So we demonstrated that last year at Techcom, uh, showing how that keyword detection application could run in the order of milliwatts. And in the real world, that means it can run on a coin cell for a year. So that was our starting point. And then we got access to the Cortex M55 and what we did was ported that application onto the M55 and it was pretty good. We were able to get quite significant improvements in both the cycle time and the energy consumption. So on the Cortex M3, the keyword recognition application was effectively using one second of processor time for one second of audio. On the Cortex M55, we got that down to a few hundredths of a second. So it's only a few percent of the cycle time. And in terms of power, that translates into a saving of 75% of the average power draw for inference, coming from a mixture of the CPU and the RAM power usage. And we did all of that without having to do much more optimization than what the tool chains and the libraries for ARM already did. There wasn't much extra heavy lifting on our part required for that. There is also an accelerator available for the Cortex M55, which is the Helium accelerator. We haven't really explored that yet. We haven't optimized our, our algorithms to take account of that, but we're looking at the specification of it, with, we believe that particularly for larger neural networks, there's room for more performance gain there as well. Um, and that may also leave room to migrate some of the functionality that in our current application is on the DSP. Uh, we can move that into software and that maybe provides an upgrade path in the field for a much more flexible application. Um, clearly there are trade-offs there and that's something that's very application specific, but it's good to open that trade space up for us. When we look at Cortex M55, uh, it appears to us the aims are really about adding intelligence and adding interactivity into endpoints. Um, in our case, we've looked at keyword detection quite closely as a test case. 
And you can see how in the context of voice assistants like Alexa and Google Home and the trend to zero UI, that kind of functionality is going to be really important in the next few years. So we have also been looking at the U55 um, and that's seen even more significant improvements on that keyword detection and the classification example. Um, so much so that that's given us the confidence to try and really stretch the capabilities of the, of the Cortex M55 and Ethos U55 combination. So we're now in the process of porting a cloud-based computer vision algorithm in the order of 200 million Macs onto that Cortex M55 and Ethos U55 pair. So it's it's probably beyond what the platform was really designed for, but we're keen to stretch it and to see what happens. And so far, the signs are looking quite promising. So we worked with ARM's M-series processors for quite a while now, and we've looked at the power performance trade-offs uh, across a number of IoT applications. And I think it's pretty safe to say that the M55 provides us a step change in what we thought was previously possible compared to those earlier generations. So one of the team, when we were looking at the latest set of results, summed it up quite well. She said, when we're looking at the platform and the power budget for something like audio detection and classification like we were before with the older M-series processors, we can now look at that same envelope and think about adding vision in. So if you think about putting vision into something where you currently only have a microcontroller, uh, that's a whole range of possibility we could look at.